for weeks before I started my Appalachian Trail through hike. I was waking up in the middle of the night, almost every night with night terrors. I had so many fears. I was so anxious about what I was about to do to my life. I was about to quit my dream job. I was about to move out of my apartment, put all my stuff in storage. And I just had so many fears that I was about to ruin my life, that I was throwing away the things that I had worked for years for. But spoiler alert, it was 1 million times over worth it, worth the journey, worth the adventure, worth the coming back to myself. And I wanted to today share some of those fears and anxieties that I had before the trail in case you're thinking of doing something like a through hike of a long trail, something that's really pulling at your soul, but fear is holding you back. I want to share the fears and anxieties that I had before chasing my own dream to hike the Appalachian Trail in case my own experience can be of help to you in overcoming your own fears and anxieties. Hi guys, if you don't know me, I'm Audrey on trail known as Glow Stick and in 2018 I quit my amazing job in Washington DC to through hike the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. It was more magical than I ever could have imagined or hoped and I don't regret it for one single second. So let's get into the fears that I had before the trail and how they worked out. My number one fear before I left for the AT was that I was ruining my career. At this point, I had lived and worked in Washington DC for about seven years. I'd gone to grad school there. I'd had internships there. I'd had jobs there and I had worked extremely hard for all of those years to finally land my dream job working at World Wildlife Fund in their communications department. It was scary and it was sad to leave that job behind, but for me, I was really burnt out from living in DC because while it's a wonderful place to start a career, it's also a place where it's very normal for your job to be your entire identity, for your job to be your entire life, and for employers to expect that you are available 24 seven for them. This was not a lifestyle that I felt like I could sustain. I have so many other interests outside of work and I just couldn't be chained to my job that, that intensely. I mean, WWF is a wonderful place to work. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing that company. I'm not bashing any of the companies that I worked for. It's just the lifestyle that is expected in DC and when you talk to friends and coworkers and other people, it's, it's always the same. The first question that people will ask you there is where do you work? What do you do? Having been in, in that culture for so long, it felt crazy to me that I was even considering leaving my job in order to chase this dream. But once I had decided I was going to do it and I let my boss know and I started telling all of these other people in my life, including coworkers and many who were much older and wiser than me, I started asking them, like, do you think I'm making a mistake? And literally every single person that I asked said, no, go do this now while you're young, have fun, enjoy your life. There are plenty of other jobs out there. I did struggle a little bit to find a job afterwards. Many of my friends had jobs to go back to. They were just going to go back to their same towns, to their same life. I didn't want to live in DC anymore, so I didn't try to keep my job. I'm not sure if I would have been able to had I asked. I, it's, I know it's a big ask for to ask a company if you can take a six months leave, leave of absence, but it is worth asking if you want to go back to your company because some people do get that option but I knew that I wanted to move away somewhere more wilderness accessible. And in my case, I went to move to Colorado. So when I got off the trail and I was dealing with post-trail depression, I stayed with my parents in New York for a while and I just applied to jobs like crazy in Colorado. It took me three months and many, many, many applications and many interviews later to get a job offer. But three months after I got off the trail, I got a job offer. And then one month later, so this was four months total after I got off the trail, I started my new job. I'm, do I love the job as much as my last job? No, but that was my dream job. But I like my job now. I'm in a good job with good benefits and I really have no complaints about it. I did not ruin my career. I was able to jump back pretty quickly into the workforce. I'm making more money than I was making before I started the trail. 
That fear, the number one fear of ruining my career was not true at all. <laughs> I did not ruin my career. I'm still working. Things are going well. A second big fear that I had was that I was going to get on the trail and I was going to be overwhelmingly lonely. I'm a people person. I'm very social. I'm an extrovert most of the time. And even though I was starting the trail with a friend of mine from college, Ibex, I was still nervous that it was just gonna end up being she and I, or maybe we wouldn't get along. And I just didn't know if we were gonna make friends. I had heard of trail families before, which are people that hike and camp together in groups, but I just didn't know what the odds were of meeting friends or forming a trail family. But this ended up being the fear that was honestly the most ridiculous in retrospect, because the AT is an incredibly friendly, social, communal place. Or at least it is if you're going northbound. I really can't speak to the southbound experience. But my year, I think about 4,000 hikers started from Springer Mountain going northbound up to Maine. And there were days when I was overwhelmed with how social it was, and I was wishing that I could have more alone time. It was so easy to make friends and everyone out there for the most part is just so happy that they get to be there and they want to take advantage of the experience as much as possible and you feel very much like you're in this community of people who are on the same exact journey and adventure that you are and you're all in it together if you ever have a problem there are people there to help you there are always people who will help you figure out what you need to figure out. There are always people who will lend an ear, talk to you, hike with you, camp with you. If you stay at, at shelters, especially in the beginning, it's so easy to make friends. You just, you know, even if you set up a tent, I always stayed in tents except for two nights in shelters, which I was not a person who liked sleeping in shelters. So I would set up my tent and then I would go over to the shelter to have dinner. And then it would be super easy to just start chatting with people. And then of course I would meet people while hiking on the trail during the day, I'd run into a lot of people, especially the first few weeks on trail down south. I was never one time lonely. Ibex and I, our very first night on the trail, met a new friend, Girl Scout, who ended up hiking with us for the next month. She asked if she could come hike with us the next morning. We said, of course, we would love that. And she stayed with us for a month and we loved her so much. And then our first week on the trail, we formed a trail family with these friends that we had met You'll find that when you start planning to go into towns to resupply, to stay at hotels to shower and do your laundry, other people will want to share rooms with you because, you know, people, a lot of people don't want to buy their own room. And so that's another really easy way to make friends. So we formed a trail family our first week on the trail and Ibex and I, for the most part, were in a trail family for our entire hike up to Katahdin. Like we finished at Katahdin with several other close friends that we had been with for a while. It was just a, a really social experience and I personally made friends that I know I will keep in touch with for my entire life. These people mean the world to me. And it also seems like friendships out there progress much, much faster because there's less of the distractions of like normal society and you're all in this kind of high emotional state from being on this adventure and doing this new thing and just enjoying the experience together. So. I would not worry if I were you about being lonely at all, because if you want to make friends, you will make friends. I promise. The third fear that I had before going into the AT was that I was going to get out there and I was going to be bored and I was going to hate it and I was going to go crazy. And I just wasn't going to like living in the wilderness for months at a time. And I would end up wanting to quit. This couldn't be farther from the truth. <laughs> I never one time wanted to quit, not one time. I know that this isn't the experience for everyone because you know, they, the trail community, they tell you don't quit on a rainy day, don't quit on a bad day. I just never wanted to quit at all. I was having the time of my life, as was Ibex. I actually like, you know, after I'd been on trail for a little bit, I started counting down in my head like, Oh, I have only five months left on trail. Oh, I only have four months left on trail. And I got freaked out as I got farther up north because I never wanted this experience to end. Even up north when my body started getting super exhausted 
and it was clear that like I wasn't going to be able to hike on forever, my brain was still like, oh, but I never want to get off the trail. I felt for, like for me, I became, I think all of the exercise, all of the fresh air, being out in nature, seeing new things every single day made my brain extremely happy. It was like flooded with happy chemicals and I was extremely happy and extremely zen out there. I also thought I was going to go out there and like kind of, you know, solve these problems in my mind, like solve these life problems and figure out my life from there on out. But that didn't happen <laughs> because I got out there and my brain just sort of like shut off in that way. Like there was nothing outside of the trail that I felt like was important enough to take my time on trail to figure out. I just wanted to like involve myself so hard in the experience and that's what I did. And it, it was just an incredible feeling to have all of that other stuff shut off in my brain and just be very in the moment. So that fear was also not valid because I loved the experience, even on days when it would rain and rain and rain and rain, which could you know get aggravating. I still was so grateful to be there. Pro tip though, on those harder days, I did often listen to music or I would listen to podcasts. At one point, my trail family and I started a little book club where we all listened to the same book while we were hiking. That was really fun. We listened to one called Pirate Hunters about these guys who were trying to find this treasure boat out somewhere in the ocean that had never been found. So that was a really fun too, like mini book club. You find different ways to entertain yourself out there. No, no two days are the same and you will not be bored. The fourth fear was that I was going to get injured while I was out there and have to get off the trail. This is a valid fear because injury is one of the most common reasons that people get off the trail along with running out of money. I was lucky in that I just had some small injuries. My knees bothered me the first few weeks, so I wore knee braces. I got some tendonitis in my ankles, which freaked me out a little bit, but I was able to just rest them and take some ibuprofen and then that fixed up the problem. I do know people who got injured and it, it, it is valid to kind of get over that fear. I got travel insurance while I was out there because obviously like I quit my job, so I didn't have my employer health insurance anymore. So I got travel insurance through this company called Alliance and it cost me less than a hundred dollars for the whole entire six months that I was out there to get travel insurance, which also included emergency medical insurance. So if you are not able to keep your insurance through your employer, or if you're young, your parents, or something like that, I would recommend getting travel insurance. And then if you, God forbid, get a serious injury, then at least your, your medical costs will be covered and that won't be something that you have to stress about. I'll put a link to this company down in the notes. I had a really good experience with them. Obviously I didn't have to use the insurance, but it was by far the cheapest option that I found. And lastly, number five of my big fears was that I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to figure out how to get into towns, to go resupply, to figure out how to bring the right amount of food, that my equipment would break and I wouldn't know what to do. I just, I had backpacked before a few times, but I was not, and I was an extremely experienced hiker, but I was not a super experienced backpacker. So I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to figure all this stuff out. But like I said earlier, there are so many people around that are there to help you if you do have an issue or if you have questions. There are so many resources out there on the internet for you to figure, out the, to figure these things out. I use a book called AWOL, The AT Guide, and this book is really awesome because it shows you, you know, the mileage on the trail and all these different things that you're going to run across on the trail to figure out what mile you're at and then where you can get off to go to towns, where you can stay, where you can get shuttles and if you don't want to hitchhike, all sorts of really useful information like that. And then a lot of other people that I know use the Gut Hook app, which I didn't use, but I probably will use that for my next through hike. It's super popular and it's the same thing. It's like, where are the campsites? Where are the shelters? Where are the towns? And then Gut Hook is really neat too, because people actually 
leave comments within the app. So, you know, you go to a water source or you're looking to go to a water source and you want to know if there actually is water at the water source, you can take a look on gut hook and a lot of pe and people will leave comments letting you know like, oh, this water source was dried up or, oh, I was here on this day and it was flowing really well. Useful information like that. It's not hard at all once you're out there to figure out the things that you need to figure out. So my advice, if this is one of your fears, is to just get out there. You will figure it out. I mean, be as prepared as possible, of course, but don't let that hold you back because you will figure it out. I'm sure this was not an exhaustive list of my fears. Like I said, I had a ton of anxiety beforehand, but these are the big ones that I still remember and wanted to address. If you have specific anxieties or fears and you're thinking about doing a through hike or something like that, please let me know in the comments and maybe I can help you get over those by answering some questions for you. Or if you have any questions about the trail in general, I would be so happy to answer them. And if you have through hikes before, I would also love to know what your fears were ahead of time and how those things turned out. So let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more AT, backpacking, hiking content. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you all later.